Charles's Law. So Jacques Charles, um, a while ago, was playing around with balloons, and if he cooled them down, or if he heated them up, what he noticed was that their volume changed. And so he figured, he was first to, to document the realization that a sample of gas is going to change in its volume based on temperature. If you heat up a balloon, it will expand. If you take a balloon and you put it in something like uh, liquid nitrogen, even if it's not quite in it, it will cool down and it will contract. So this balloon here is not empty. It has the exact same amount of gas in it. It's just that the particles themselves have cooled down, and therefore the volume between the particles has become less. If you took this balloon out and just put it on the counter, it would reinflate as those particles inside it, which are still there right now in the, inside this balloon here, they're there. They're just very close together. If you allow it to heat up again, those particles would spread out again, inflating the balloon. So a balloon placed in cool environments will have smaller volume, and warmer environments will have larger volume. Lord Kelvin um, was, again, cooling volumes of gases, and what he was doing is he, he plotted what the volume would be for a particular temperature. So if you take a, a temperature here, um, and you increase the temperature to, say, this level here, so there's an increase in temperature, the volume also increases. So we see there's a proportional relationship between temperature going up and volume going up. So same thing as Charles, that, that's what Charles's law states. What Lord Calvin figured was that, okay, well that's fine, I can only go for a certain range in temperature, but I can only say measure the temperatures in these ranges. I don't have the instruments to get any higher than that, and I can't cool them down any more than that. So what he did was he extrapolated his data further, and he realized, well, if, you, if the volume gets larger when the temperature goes up, the volume must also get smaller as the temperature goes down. So if the volume is going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, at some point, the volume will hit zero. That was the realization that Calvin came up with. And so extrapolating the data, when you decrease the temperature, the volume's getting lower and lower and lower. And if we were to measure this, so this is this is the scale we're going to talk about in a second. If we measure where this temperature happens, at some point it crosses this x-axis. So at what temperature does the volume go to zero? And it depends on what you measure it with. But essentially, um, if you're measuring it with Celsius, the point in which that volume of the gas would get to zero, the x-axis in Celsius would be at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So he came up with a, a new scale that said, okay, well, let's actually start a scale at this point. And we're going to start that at zero. Now, each unit on the scale is going to be the same as unit Celsius. So a, a degree Celsius will be the same as this new scale. It's just that this new scale is going to start at zero, where the Celsius scale would be at the zero point in terms of volume. And this is referred to as the Kelvin scale for temperature. So zero degrees Kelvin, the absolute coldest temperature you can get because you can't have negative volume. So by the time volume gets down to zero, that's it. And this happens at negative 273 Celsius, or 273.15-ish. Um, Celsius, that is going to be the start of the Kelvin scale. So there will be no z negative numbers on the Kelvin scale. It's going to have the same magnitude in unit as Celsius. So Kelvin and Celsius are both measured in degrees. One degree Celsius is one degree Kelvin. They're just offset by 273 units. So to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you're going to be adding 273 because Think about it. If, if Kelvin scale is at zero, um, then we're going to be looking at the Celsius scale. Um, sorry, so, if we convert Celsius to Kelvin. So at zero degrees Kelvin, we're at negative 273 Celsius. So imagine we were at zero degrees Celsius. That's much further up the scale. Um, so if that's Celsius, we're going to be adding 273 to get to the Kelvin scale. So 0 degrees Celsius must be 
So degrees Celsius plus 273 must be 273 Kelvin. So any number on the Celsius scale, if you want to convert it to Kelvin, you're going to be adding 273. And then the opposite would be true. If you're at the Kelvin scale and you want to go to Celsius, you want to subtract 273. So as I was saying earlier, if you're at zero degrees Kelvin and you want to go to Celsius, you're going to have to subtract 273 to get to the Celsius version. So Charles's law states the relationship between um, the volume of a gas and its temperature. And as you saw in that, that plot earlier, it is a proportional relationship. So volume and temperature being in a proportional relationship, I don't know why that temperature is over there, um, we can set it up and express it as an equation like so. So the initial volume divided by the initial temperature will be equal to the final volume divided by the final temperature. But we must put our temperatures into Kelvin. So don't ever use Celsius to do a gas law calculation. Always convert it to Kelvin um, and that way we're always got a positive value for temperature so that our proportional relationship isn't going to get messed up just because we're crossing over zero on an arbitrary scale. We need an absolute uh, number. So Kelvin will always give us positive temperature values because you can't go below zero degrees Kelvin because then you then be be in negative volumes. So there is our um, equation and let me get to there's the question. Okay, here it all is at once. Um, so given the volume of a particular sample of gas at 20 degrees Celsius and then we heat it to 65 degrees Celsius. So we're going to be using our equation here and we are looking for the new volume. So think of it as final volume. So we're going to have to rearrange this equation, and again, use your algebraic skills. If we multiply both sides by final temperature, so it would end up over here as a numerator, we're doing the same to both sides, so we're allowed to do that. And that would cancel it out from the right-hand side of the equation, because there's a numerator and a denominator that are the same term, so they're gone. And we'd end up with this as our equation, where we are solving for final volume. We take our data from the question and we plug it in. Um, the volume is easy to do. It's, it doesn't matter what unit you do volume in, it's just whatever unit you're in, that's the unit you're going to end in if you're solving for volume because it's what's going to be left. What you do need to do is need to make sure that your temperatures are converted to Kelvin. So you've got to convert 20 degrees Celsius and remember you're, you're doing that by adding 273 degrees, sorry, 270 Three to get the Kelvin value. So we end up with our 20 being converted into Kelvin of 293. That's our initial temperature. And then the final temperature is 65. So we add 273 to that. That gives us 338 Kelvin. Kelvins are going to cancel out and our final volume will be in centimeters cubed. If you want to convert that to, I don't know, millimeters maybe, or sorry, milliliters. One centimeter in volume is equal to one milliliter in volume, so that would also be 29.4 milliliters. And then, if you wanted to convert that to liters, you can use your milliliters to liters conversion as well.